Hi everyone, welcome to the Shorter Can Chronicles. In today's video, we're going to watch a trailer for a documentary on one of the most influential karate masters in the last 30 years that couldn't tell you the difference between an oizuki and a gyakuzuki. That karate master is Pat Morita. But first, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. So I'm sure all of you are yelling at the screen right now going, Norm, Pat Morita wasn't a martial artist. And you're 100% correct. Pat Morita knew nothing about the martial arts. He came into his acting role that became so popular and so important to the martial arts, Mr. Miyagi, with absolutely no understanding of the martial arts. He, however, took that role and ran with it. He embodied the character of Mr. Miyagi. And Mr. Miyagi was so important to so many different people over the years involved in the martial arts. The Karate Kid movies inspired a lot of people to uh, be become part of the martial arts, to sign up for classes, to take part in karate and other martial arts. And Mr. Miyagi was a huge part of that. And he continued the role through Karate Kid 1, 2, 3... The next Karate Kid, as well, even though uh, he has passed away now, he is an important pivotal role in Cobra Kai with the returning of Daniel and Johnny Lawrence to the uh, Karate Kid franchise and continuing on the storyline that was created back in the 80s. This documentary is about the life of Pat Morita. You're going to learn a lot more about his life and what he went through and what he had to do to become the person that he was for the role as uh, as Mr. Miyagi, as well as you're going to see his darker side, the struggles that he went through. He was a very troubled man. He struggled with life and there was a lot of things that he had to go through. And this documentary, while those of us that are were so inspired by him, we get to see that he was actually suffering. We learn about the stuff that was maybe hidden from a lot of people that they didn't see. Um, I don't know, Pat was not so much in... To, in my eye, I didn't see him in a lot of stuff. After the Karate Kid, I didn't realize all the things that he was doing voiceover work for and stuff like that. Now, when Karate Kid came out when I was young, I knew who Pat Morita was. Uh, I grew up in that time when Happy Days was in syndication and Pat Morita was on Happy Days. He, he played uh, Arnold. And I, after I watched the documentary and saw some of the spin-offs that he was in and some of the other shows that he was given I was like oh, I remember these which was was really cool is some of these short-lived shows that he was on or that he even starred in uh, that as the lead role in a time when Asian actors were um, not used or <laughs> even Caucasian men putting on makeup or disguises to play Asian characters like the best example of that is Genghis Khan being played by the Duke. Like, John Wayne playing Genghis Khan. Like, come on. Really? Now, this documentary is brought to you by Love Project Films, who also brought you the documentary that I, I shared with you several months ago, Empty Hand, The Real Karate Kids. And I'll have a link to that popping up somewhere up here. That documentary was about real-life martial artists, uh, a bunch of teens that were preparing for the national championships in the States. Now, this documentary is still martial arts related, still karate related, but it's more about the actor, as I said, that plays Mr. Miyagi. Now, there's another documentary that they also produce that I'm going to do a, a review video like this for in the future. And that's the real Mr. Miyagi. And the documentary is on Fumio Damura, who was Pat Morita's stunt double during the Karate Kid films. So now, without any further ado, let's take a look at the trailer 
for Pat Morita more than Miyagi. Pat Morita. Mr. Pat Morita. Oh, yeah. Pat Morita, ladies and gentlemen. Lenny Bruce's mother named him the hip nip, but he hung on because now all of a sudden he had an angle. He would tend to do the same show over again. <laughs> And then he couldn't figure out why he wasn't getting laughs. I don't think he paid much attention to the rules of the game. You know, he kind of did what he wanted to do. He really embraced the things that many of us run away from. He, he ran to it. He opened for Victor Moan, Connie Stevens, and uh, Red Fox, who put him on his show. He was just a lovely, lovely man. Pat went on and became a huge star. And he created one of the iconic characters in American cinema. One thing I learned with comics is they were actually some of the most unhappy, tortured people, and their comedy comes from pain. I mean, he was in a cast for like nine years, from his knees to like his neck for his childhood. The day he gets out, he walks into a war. He had a lot of inner demons. He struggled a lot with depression, and he was drinking too much. And he was doing too much drugs. He was drinking so much that I went to the line producer and said, I'm scared to death he's going to fall off a cliff. And he was stumbling and, and he fell flat on his face. That was when it really, really hit home and he realized, I've got a big problem. That entire chapter of my life changed me forever. So I hope you enjoyed the trailer. I'm not receiving anything for reviewing this documentary. Um, I'm going to put some links in the description below on how you can purchase the documentary or how you can rent it online. I believe you can get it through iTunes and Google Play as well as the uh, directly from the website for the documentary. Thanks for watching. If you want to see any of my other videos, there'll be some screens popping up here. And we'll see you next time right here on the Shotokan Chronicles.